because that's the other band they could have gone with here instead of the Renata. To, but that would, of course, have baited the oh. way back. A twist of oh, oh, oh. The crowd loves that one. Five and zero. <laughs> All five games by this man in the mid lane. BDD. It's Orn. You know, we've seen him play Jax in situations like this and control the, the matchup. We've seen him just pick Malphite to anything, which is the safest and easiest. Malphite. You've got Tom Kench for the Aphelios, but that alone isn't going to be enough. There are too many threats. You've got a Viego, you've got Gold Card, you've got Zaya Feathers. Looking at the bot lane as a, yeah, unsurprising, uh, Chovy. Pretty good win rate on Ari. And, and as you pointed out already, Wolf, five and zero. The only one who's willing to pull it out and every time that KT have played it, uh, that, uh, are going to be tough to deal with here for the Ephelios. But gold no card. ghost. Yeah, mainly. Oh, a little knock up here as Cleanse used early, pays. But it does mean that Keen's probably not going to be getting six. solo kills. There's no cleanse in the bottom lane. BDD is already here. This is the freest kill of all time. Down goes Faze, and Aiming's going to pick that one up. And where's Toby? He's not able to make an impact here. And this is just like the previous game. Toby's sitting up here with a CS lead. He's going to make That's it. That's um, it. So definitely the lead more important here. Okay, going to call an Ornhorn onto BDD, who does have Flash. Selects not to use it, and does after the fact, but nearly loses his life. Uh, nice well, mostly leads to Chovy maybe being able, as Lahenz is still around here. Hmm. Well, we're backing in our own brush. Doran still quite tanky as they look to turn this one around. Cousin Lahenz maybe going a little bit too deep as here comes Chovy up the river as everybody's just trying to... While Malphite gets gold, and you're never really losing those skirmishes. Okay, nice little setup here. We do not have Flash on Cuz. He's going to Heartbreak of the Wall, but Aiming will not be as lucky. He will be left to the Wolves that are Genji in this case. Nice little damage there, but... Very nice turn attempt there from Peanut, but it does feel a little bit late as... Uh oh here we go. Destiny Gate up to the top side, and Delight might be the food as... Okay, though, Pace is trying to frontline here, trying to do some damage there as with Peanut around. They're actually in a 3 3 as PDD takes way too much damage, and even with the Catalyst is not able to survive through that as here comes Doran. He does not quite have his Ornhorn, horn, but looks like Cuz might be going down here, not able to get over the Blast Cone. And another kill will go over to Peanut, who is on a killing spree. Gen G maybe, uh, oh, aiming? Aiming doesn't have anything as, okay, he's just gonna Gale Force away, and that will be enough. Such a risky fight to take here. Yeah, you have Malphite, but you need the damage. It's still early game. Yeah, no BD deals either, actually. Yeah, just gonna walk on in, BDD with the Ghost into this fight. A little bit of tip damage, but there's the Wombo Combo on the BDD and a massive charm into that backline from a hand, but no follow-up damage from the side of KG. It'll be BDD to go down first, but the steal does come in from Cuz. as another Hextech Soul is on the rim, but a massive flash in from Toby as KT trying to re-engage the Feather Storm is big. Two kills oh. for Aiming, and all of a sudden, Cuz and Aiming are getting the reset. And they are getting the fight on this Drake as they are so incredibly low. Toby looking to try to get back in there as it looks like KT may have gone just a little bit too far. Toby looking for the cleanup and everybody's trapped in the pit as the charm will land. And that'll be the end of the Zaya. That will be the end of the Viego. As Hard engage. It be very, very tough as all cuz. Sneaky Viego in the bush. With a Malphite with ult, by the way. Yeah, well, <laughs> they're gonna catch Sylvie here, who does go into Spirit Rush immediately, understanding the threat. They need to get vision of where the threats on the side of Gen.G are. You could just push away from the Malphite here and keep track of him with this Wukong that's pretty fed and not worry about anything. Gen.G playing this so calmly. Uh-oh, Charm here on the cuz, just waiting for that one. He's got to flash away. And all of a sudden, your jungler is basically non-existent here. With the light covering it, I don't think KT is going to be able to win. It's about, can they find? Well, Hens, you're on vision. I guess he had no idea. <laughs> He's just going to be free food for Pays. Who pays and KT caught off guard. And he, not, I mean, he does so much damage at this point. He can basically do this by himself while they lock the rest of the KT members out here. Okay, here comes KT. They really want to take this fight, it looks like, as Destiny committed to Cuz nearby. Look at the hands. Charm used as Flash on in, but no, it's going to be the 
takedown here from Peanut onto this objective as Ornhorn from the pit. Not very good as Lahens in that back line, though. As the Cyclone is getting so much damage, and Peanut is going to pick up this first kill. And here comes the rest of the Gen G just to go straight in after that one. Double kill now for Peanut, who is 8 and 0. Very beginning of playoffs of KT's judgment. Sometimes being faulty here in these mid-game scenarios. Oh my god, the oh, light oh, the wall. Oh, the wall. Oh, he didn't oh, have vision, so that's why he didn't flash it. Because the, the oh. extended range actually hits him, but he doesn't actually have vision Meanwhile, on the indicator. King's just dead in the side lane. Oh my god. This snowball has turned into an avalanche yeah, in favor game, of Gen.G. This is one of their weak points in the mid-game, even when they're ahead. And then from behind, they just look so disjointed here. And uh, this is what we're talking about. If it's an actual front to back, you're not winning, right? And, and right here, even with the hands on a flanking angle, and Pace not doing that much damage, Peanut is so fed that him and Chovy are just winning this fight by themselves. By the time the rest of the team got in, after the kill of lands, and there's just no reprieve. Everybody on the side of KT is just being hunted down. Now we do have Cuz here. He does come in for the save, but only for a, a millisecond, as now maybe he's going to be the next guy to go down. Pays. And then that TP from Keen with KT making the read. All right, yes. Green Gage comes in. Keen desperate to try to get something going, but even the LDR Abelios is doing great damage to him now. As he might take his first loss on the Malphite himself. A little bit of a far so far ahead in this game, it is incredible. As they are going to take down the Hextech Soul with three Hextech Drakes. As he's still looking for the angles because we know that he can. KT absolutely respecting it, but the two man knockup goes in. The Devourer is immediately there. The damage not quite. As they do try to go all in onto the light, but they can't even take them down. The redemption keeps them alive. And that is going to be nearly a full wipe here in favor of Gen G. They are chasing down every single member of KT. As it looks like maybe only BDD and Lahens will be able to get away. Even to teleport to zone them away from this one. Gen G absolutely going to run away with game number two. Looks like we got a tied series here after the second game, and what was a great draft from Gen G in game one is shut down. KT with their comfort picks, BDD's twisted fate, aiming on Saya, and Keegan on the Malphite, and they still can't get it done. And there you go, even a little bonus kill on the BDD, put him in 0-5 before going into the next game, just to add that little bit of extra salt. ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ